Tito back with another video on the Redmi Note 10 Pro and today in this video I'm not really sure where to start this video from. I'm currently on the Octave US version 2.9 official build and the flashing procedure is pretty similar. You can watch the previous flashing guides that I've made for the Redmi Note 10 Pro. The flashing procedure should be similar to that and here this build date here is 28th of September 2021. If you are noticing from here, of course, this build includes G apps. And let me share my story where I started to actually think that this I can use as a daily driver. So I did put my SIM card in here and I did try to use this as my daily driver, but I faced huge amount of problems. And that is not because of the ROM alone. You kind of can blame me to actually be the reason for it because I flashed Magisk over here. And on top of that, I tried to use the ANX camera version 190R first and that was taking those stretchy kind of portrait pictures. That's why I was tired of it. But then I tried to go into the support group and there I asked which ANX camera to use and stuff. Then they suggested me to use the version 204 of the ANX camera. And I did flash that. And let me tell you how can you do that and how can you flash 204 version of ANX camera. Well, after you flash Magisk normally, the Magisk zip, you just boot into your system and open Magisk and from there you go into this section and then from there you go into this install from storage and from here as you can see this is the 204 file this is the 368 MB. I'm going to talk about the camera a lot in the first part of this video so stick with me if you want to know about the ANX camera or you can skip this particular part. Timestamps will be on the seek bar of course. So right now let me talk about this version 204 of the ANX camera. This particular ANX camera, once I flashed it with Magisk, it is very simplistic. Of course, you just click on it, it just flashes and you just reboot the device. Then you can have your ANX camera. You don't need any MIUI core or something. And the whole camera is working almost perfectly fine. But yes, there are style bugs. But the picture quality is close to, very close to MIUI. And that is great. The picture quality over here is just amazing. No issues whatsoever that I was facing. But there are some few issues, I would say, regarding the camera itself. So yeah, as you can see the front camera and stuff, everything is working. And I do see those like phase detection and there is a little bit of stabilization going on that I can see with my eyes. And even if you are taking a portrait picture, well, as you can see, it shows this green because I'm pretty sure this is because of this beautify kind of filter. If you turn it down, as you can see, it fixes it. So yeah, these kind of bugs are there and still the phase detection is working perfectly fine if you're noticing that box right there. Let me actually take a selfie. Let me just show you. Yeah, the picture quality over here, if you're noticing, is great. No issues whatsoever and the background blur and stuff, everything worked. But as you can see, this is a 9 to 16 picture. But again, the picture quality is fine. But this 9 to 16 bug, I don't mind a lot because the picture quality overall is fine. The front camera pictures comes out to be like this kind of aspect ratio and if you go into the info as you can see this is a 2.1 megapixel photo so yeah that's how it is and even in the photo mode if you take a selfie let me show you what happens here also if you go into the info this is again a 2.1 megapixel photo but with the rear camera you can shoot 16 megapixel photos let me actually take one so yeah there is kind of dust on top of it and yeah so as you can see the picture quality is great with this and let me actually show you in the info, yes, this is a 16 megapixel photo. So yeah, with the rear camera, the picture quality is great. And even in video, we also have these 4K 30 FPS, all those options. Right now, let me show you the more options. And from here, if you select the 64 megapixel mode, the camera will break. So yeah, do not select the 64 megapixel mode. Otherwise, it will break your camera. There is a fix also about that I'll talk about. But here, let me show you the super macro mode also is working perfectly fine. If you go close up to a subject, as you can see, super macro also works here. So that is great. Now enough talk about those. Now let me show you in the dual video mode. If you go into it, it shows this green kind of camera. So yeah, you can fix these, I guess this and the 64 megapixel mode too, I guess you can fix. But for those, you have to really dig into the zip file. Let me tell you what I'm talking about. This is the zip file of the ANX camera version 204. As you can see, 368 MB, it shows right here. But you need to do one thing. You need to go to Play Store and download this particular app, which says this. Let me actually. OK, so I can't really show you the Play Store page right now because I am facing another problem, which I'll talk about in the later part of this video. But yeah, this is let me show you the app name. This is a Z archiver. You can find it in Play Store, the green icon you might look for. This is not the paid version and you can download it. After that, you just open it and then go into your downloaded folder. 
and from here as you can see this is the 350 mb file of the version 204 anx but you might see another file which says like the same name but it has 99 mb of size so you have to delete one part of this particular main zip just don't look at this like second anx camera 204 zip right now let me show you what i have done so over here you just go into it i just made a copy of it that's why i have two files so you just go into it you just click on view then from here you go into system and then from here you just delete this vendor folder now that fixes some stuff but i would say the quality goes up to that version 190r of the anx camera if you delete this vendor folder then if you flash that particular zip the new zip now after you have deleted this vendor folder from right here then you can do one thing you can go back and let me tell you you might as well make a copy of it before doing that so yeah after doing that you might go into magisk so from this installation of the magisk module part you have to click on this install from storage then from here you just select this 105 mb file which is the newer file you just flash that with the same method of course and that will be giving you the newer kind of anx camera without those green kind of bugs that i just showed you earlier in the dual video mode but there the quality is not this great now let me tell you the whole problem of flashing this anx camera after i flash this anx camera on my device my magisk was showing as a malicious app in play store so play protect kind of blocked it almost so i turned off play protect for a couple of like times this happened when I did have my SIM card in here and as you can see my Google accounts were signed out and it showed this like I have to verify my account that is fine too I tried to enter my password if you click next it, you will be given a position where you have to enter your account's password I tried to do that and it simply did not let me sign in so this is the problem right now I am facing over here in this Octavio ROM. So this is what the problem I am facing over here. I could not even back up my WhatsApp data right now because like it backs up into drive, but I don't even have my account signed in over here. So how can it back my data up in the drive? So yeah, that's how it is. That's what the problem is. I had to pull out my SIM and put it in my K20 Pro as of now. This is what the problem is if you go with the ANX camera. But let me tell you clearly, this is not the ROM's fault. This is not at all like the whole ROM's fault. This can as well be causing because of the ANX camera. If I completely uninstall Magisk, I was not facing these much problems. And let me tell you one more thing. After flashing the ANX camera, this newer version 204 of ANX camera, I did face a lot of like random reboots. And yes, it does happen from time to time still. Yes, there are a few more bugs in the ROM too. But this is very annoying that it actually signs you out from your Google account and you just cannot simply like get in even when you have entered your password of your google account so yeah this is really annoying experience that i have had but let me simply tell you one thing if you want to flash this octave us rom on your redmi note 10 pro just don't flash magisk or just don't use any anx camera because this rom already has the google camera go edition by default and this camera works perfectly fine don't get me wrong this is not a bad quality like camera or something yes this camera is very good even while taking videos and stuff it should be very good also the portrait mode and stuff everything works here no issues whatsoever with the gcam go present by default so you might as well be sticking with the google camera go that's what at least i will suggest you guys to do in my frank opinion again it's not worth it to actually flash the new version 204 of the anx camera on this particular rom because it makes a very annoying experience well the same experience i think can be happening with other roms too if you flash anx camera version 204 on those but i'm not really sure about that yet because i have not tried it this anx camera version 204 i tried for the first time on this particular rom i did not even know that this was out there so yeah i got to know that from the octavio support group so huge thanks to the developers and admins but the overall roms experience was good and at first i was very excited about the octave os but right now i cannot even use it i know this has been a really like huge rant kind of thing over here about this rom but yeah i'm not ranting i'm just saying my experience or i'm just sharing my experience with you guys so yeah clearly i would not suggest flashing magisk or anx camera on this particular rom as of right now just use the rom as stock the safety net also passes over here by default so that should not be a problem either 
I'm not gonna be showing you guys the benchmarks or something today in this video, but without that, let me tell you my experience with this. This is how my quick sitting panel looks like. It has this very cool look. It has the like date right here, the time, and this is with the newer kind of quick sitting toggle styles. And we have the like temperature right here. And this is how it looks like because I have customized this quick setting panel and you can of course change this brightness slider style to over here and it looks very cool with this meme kind of stroke. And if you go into edit and add, you can edit and add multiple toggles just by clicking one as you can see. So yeah, this is very useful kind of quick setting panel. Also one good thing is this ROM has the FPS info. So yeah, you can always see FPS if you want to just over there on the top left. As you can see right now, the FPS almost goes 120 sometimes whenever I'm swiping like this. So yeah, the FPS info working perfectly fine. Nightlight also works, but there is also the DC dimming. If you turn on DC dimming, the nightlight like disables itself. And we have the screen recording option, the Android 11 screen recording option in the quick setting panel. We have the device audio and microphone audio, etc. So yeah, all those options are there. The battery kind of like settings you can go if you tap and hold on it. The always on display toggle is there. The rack theme toggle is there. The sound toggle is there. If you tap and hold on it, this is how the volume panel looks like because again, I customized it. And we also have the reboot toggle right here. So if you tap and hold on it, you can directly reboot into your recovery. And we have the power menu as well. And here in the power menu, I did see a bug. Let me actually show you. As you can see, these things shows up, but as soon as I touch on it, this does not work. As of now, I know my Google account is not signed in, so it won't work anyway. But yeah, when it was signed in, I could not simply use this. As you can see, if I'm touching the like space, as you can see, it just goes away. So yeah, I could not use this Google Smart Home. This is one of the bugs that I have faced in this particular ROM. Heads up, you can disable the data saver is there, the nearby share is there, and hotspot, etc. You can enable or disable from right here. If you go into the settings, this is how it looks like. And let me scroll down. Now, this is how the Android version section looks like. We have the OctaVUS version 2.9 right here, official build, and we have the resolution, the screen resolution, and all the specs listed over here. And the maintainer sim is Pratrak Vardwaj, so huge thanks to him for this particular ROM. And we have the device name right here and the September 5th security patch we have. So latest security patch you are getting and the stock kernel here is the Vantum kernel. And if you tap and hold on the Android version, it will give you this Android 11 Easter egg. And as you can see, this is of course Android 11 based ROM. Now inside this OctaviLab, you will have all the customizations and this is how the customization panel looks like. It has a huge amount of customizations of course, but I'm not going to show you all the customizations again and again because it might get boring again. So yeah. And from the bottom, you can change the status bar left and right padding. I did change those. That's why, as you can see, you can do this. So yeah, however you like it to be, you can actually change this padding. So that is great. Let me go back from right here. We have the quick setting kind of like column and row number customization, etc. So yeah, all those customizations are there. You can see from right here. Octavi theming is there and we have the RGB accent picker. So you can pick any kind of accent color. Also the switch appearance, you can change then the nav bar style from the brightness slider style to the setting style. In the G visual mode, I did change this to medium. That's why you are seeing these rounded corners. So yeah, huge customizations are there. Again, the volume panel, you can customize the power menu and the visualizer, the weather, gaming mode, miscellaneous stuff is there. The charging animation and stuff, everything shows up. No issues with that. Also the fast charging and the battery life here is great. I did not have any issues with the battery life, but again, I could not even use the Strom as my daily driver for a long time because of the other reasons that I already talked about. In the display settings, this is how it looks like. We have the styles and wallpapers and the live display is there. And if you scroll down, we have the double tap to width, the pocket direction, etc. The DC dimming is also there and we have the font styles and you can change the fonts to like plethora of options. As you can see, huge font customizations are there in this ROM. And we have the full screen apps. You can force some particular apps to full screen. Display cutout, you can change if you want to change that. And the refresh rate, you can change the max and the minimum refresh rate. I don't know what this display white balance does. And we have the live display color calibration from right here. You can control the RGB of the screen. Nightlight is there and you can turn up or down the intensity if you're using it. Let me go back to the sound settings. This is how it looks like. And we have all these sound settings. You can enable the vibrate on connect, call waiting, etc. And the clear speaker, etc. options are there. Now let's talk about the calling. Yes, Vaulty calling and stuff was working fine. And here you get this oxygenous kind of stock dialer. And here with this dialer, yes, you do get the call recording option, but the call recording option was simply not working for me at least. So that's how it is. Also in the security, I did add the fingerprints and there is the face unlock. I added two and the app locker I have been using two. So let me tell you one thing that there is double tap to sleep anywhere in this home screen of this stock launcher and the fingerprint scanner speed is blazing fast. As you can see, it works 100% of the time. It unlocks the device very fast. So no issues what I have faced with the fingerprint scanner at least. 
it unlocks very fast and this is very convenient that this rom has this double tap to sleep anywhere in the home screen let me show you the launcher settings this is how it looks like and the stock launcher over here is this octavi launcher that is present by default in the misc settings we have the show ram in the recents and the double tap gesture is here and we have the allow home screen rotation then the developer options if you go back it will force close the launcher settings for once i guess no okay so in the app drawer this is how it looks like we have the home screen right here we have the show gradient and stuff let me go back you can disable the suggestions from right here and we have the icons you can change the icon size font size etc of the home screen and again to the left we have the google's discover page swiping upgrades to the app drawer and this background blur all over the ui if you are noticing this background blur there is no settings for that but like in the customization there is no separate settings but you can search for it from right here then let me actually show you if you search blur which i did already then it will be getting you into the developer options and from here you can enable this enable blur option then you can reboot the device once then you can get the blur effect overall so that's why i got this blur kind of background effect every time i go into my power menu or something every time i go into the app drawer that's why you are seeing this background blur it looks very cool now as i showed you the fumit scanner speed well this is how the always on display looks like and yeah as you can see there is the face unlock let me point the device towards my face and as you can see it unlocks also the face unlock works perfectly fine but one thing with the app lock that i have faced let me show you with the app lock yes it does work perfectly fine once you are opening them with the home screen and it shows this fingerprint and the use pin and the use face data option then i can tap the fingerprint scanner and of course it unlocks but let me show you if you have a notification of a app that is locked if you try to open it let me show you so right now as you can see it opens the particular app it doesn't ask you for any fingerprint or something if you are clicking on the notification this is a bug with the app lock that is present in the rom so yeah this rom was pretty fast and snappy to use but again i did face these problems that i just talked about and yes it was giving me random reboots like later down the line it was increasing so yeah i did had to pull out my sim card from here and currently my sim card is back in my redmi k20 pro with the evolution x rom so what do i think again about the latest octavio is on the redmi note 10 pro if you ask me personally the camera situation is okay if you ask me personally with the gcam go and with other gcams too if, if you want to you can install the 7 or 3 onyx gcam also that too works fine here no issues the quality is great but if you try to install a nix camera i mean you got yourself into the hassle you have to live with it so yeah if you don't want those hassles i would say just go into magis if you have already flashed it just uninstall the magis completely just click on this uninstall and complete uninstall that's how you can get the best experience out of this octavio os if you're staying away from the a nix camera so yeah i would frankly say just stay away from the a nix camera if you're flashing these roms so thank you so much for watching this video guys give it a thumbs up if you liked it subscribe to the channel if you have not yet this is tito from kdn tech signing off for today and i'll be catching you guys in the next one bye bye now